Let me tell you the incredible and frankly ridiculous true story of Tycho Brahe. Oh my, it's pronounced Tycho Brahe. Shut up, this is my show and Tycho Brahe sounds cooler. Accuracy is more important than entertainment. Oh, accuracy is more important than the, 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 the. Tycho was a 16th century astronomer and raging party animal that predicted planetary motion. This guy drank like a fish, so he was basically like the Bert Kreischer of astronomers, except, you know, like, actually funny. And he had this crazy, ridiculous mustache going on. I mean, look at this. What the fuck is that? Tycho's chaotic life started from a very young age. Born into a noble family in Denmark in 1546, he was kidnapped at the age of two by his uncle, and his parents didn't really give a shit. He was raised by said uncle in a castle, away from his parents, which probably had a big impact on his personality, his behavioral misconducts, and his subsequent drinking habits. Initially, Tycho studied law, but he wasn't really too interested in it. Then one day, when he was 20 years old, he witnessed a solar eclipse, which just completely blew his mind. And that's when he found out that astronomy was his one true calling. He began studying the stars and the planets, and he quickly became obsessed with predicting their movements. Of course, while studying all of this, Tycho drank a lot. One day while out partying, Tycho got into an argument with some guy over some math equation, and he decided to fight the dude with swords over math. During the sword fight, Tycho got a huge chunk of his nose just cut off. And so in typical Tycho fashion, he decided to wear a prosthetic brass nose because why not, right? <laughs> Tycho's claim to fame started when he discovered a new star, which propelled him up the scientific social ladder, eventually giving him his own personal island and his own gigantic observatory. Inside of this observatory, Tycho had his own printing press and his own meth lab. Oh yeah, and he also <laughs> and he also hired a pet dwarf named Jep. My name is Jep. Jep lived. Jep lived under a table, and Tycho only took the poor guy out when Tycho wanted to be entertained or if he wanted his guests to be entertained. Oh yeah, and Jeb could apparently tell the future. Bush did 9-11. Throughout his studies and his newfound status, Tycho continued to party like an animal. Like, I just imagine every night his friends would just haul his drunk ass to the bathroom and be like, Yo, hold back his stash! Yo, his nose fell off! Yeah, that reminds me of my college days. hi yo hi yo hi yo Yeah. Wake up! What? Get on your bed! Yo, where the fuck am I, bro? <laughs> where the fuck- Alright, this pisses me off. In one of Tycho's parties, someone got way too hammered and fell down some stairs and fucking died. And guess what? That someone wasn't even a person. It wasn't even a human being. It was Tycho's pet moose. A thousand pound moose. Just imagine how much alcohol you need to feed a fucking moose for it to get to that level. I'm lying, that's just funny as fuck. Anyways, I guess that incident along with a plethora of other drunk incidents caused the new Danish king to resent Tycho because the new king kicked him out. Tycho then moved to the Holy Roman Empire and upon arriving there, he was told that he would be getting an assistant named Johannes Kepler, who would also become a world famous and renowned astronomer. Kepler was like the polar opposite of Tycho. Kepler was very religious and abstemious which basically meant that he abstained from any vices such as drugs or sex or anything fun. So basically, this guy was a huge square. Now, I don't know how accurate this next part is, but apparently when Kepler initially arrived at Tycho's mansion, he brought with him a letter of introduction. Now, Tycho immediately assumed this guy was like a complete boner. So he decided to mess with him. He handed Kepler a problem that he had been working on for the past two years and told Kepler that it would be a very, very simple problem to solve. Kepler, as determined as he was, spent the next two days without sleeping or eating to solve the problem. When he got back to Tycho with the solution, Tycho was shocked. He realized that Kepler was actually like a genius that had the potential to surpass Tycho, which made Tycho hate him even more. This led Tycho to continually mess with the guy, just like how Tom messes with Greg in succession. Hey, scooch over a little bit, buddy. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Greg. Again, not too sure on the accuracy of this part, but in one such instance, Tycho, knowing that Kepler was a deeply religious virgin, sent a bunch of naked women up to Kepler's room, in which Kepler slammed his door shut, threw himself onto his knees, and began praying for strength. At the end of his short yet eventful life, Tycho died doing what he loved doing, partying. In a banquet with the king of Prague, Prague, in a banquet with the king of Prague, 
Heiko drank a ton and needed to pee very, very badly. However, it was considered extremely rude to leave the table with the king still present. So Taiko decided to tough it out and hold in his pee until his bladder fucking exploded. Ah! His death created a lasting impact and legacy. And no, I'm not talking about just his scientific achievements. No, I'm talking about the fact that Taiko's death led to the creation of an ancient Czech phrase that roughly translates to, I don't want to Taiko myself, brah. I can't believe I'm ending the video on that shitty ass fucking pun, bro. This was like my first foray into making storytelling videos. So if you like the content, press like and subscribe. And yeah, the next video will be an hour long. So stay tuned for that. That's going to really hurt my throat.